Hello and happy Wisdom Wednesday. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I'm Dr. Ben. And I'm Dr. Susanna. And we are both naturopathic doctors who empower you to heal yourself through whole food, plant-based nutrition, lifestyle medicine, and also your state of mind, your mindset. And that's what we'll be exploring here today on this week's Wisdom Wednesday, talking about the mindset, mind-body connection with our kidneys and our urinary tract and bladder. And you might not really consider your state of mind and your energetic, emotional state when it comes to kidney health and preventing UTIs and bladder infections and things like that. But in fact, there are connections, connections with our mind in all aspects of our body because our mind is <laughs> in all aspects of our body. That's right. Our mind is not just our brain. Uh, our mind is all aspects of our body. We are we're just a body mind organism. You mm. can't separate it. Mm. You probably already know that. Mm. But we'll explore these topics as it relates to kidneys. Yes. And bladder. And, and it's stuff. it's funny because on Monday, you know, we kind of left off saying like to be continued. We we said how there's actually a huge mind body connection between your mind and your urinary tract. I mean, but the truth is, it's like you could say that about any organ, right? We do. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> oh, but this one is really connected. Yes. And again, yes, it is really connected, just like all things else are really connected. But it's so interesting. I have experienced clinically a lot of individuals who have had like urinary frequency, urinary tract like infections where. Urinary tract like infections? Yeah. Or urinary tract. In uh, symptoms that mimic urinary tract infections, uh, UTI symptoms, but not a UTI. Well, they're or... where their culture comes back completely clear, and even with treatment of antibiotics, their symptoms persist. And just really kind of interesting, you know, mysterious bladder system. There are, you know, other other bladder conditions that can lead to those symptoms. I know, of course, but anyway, it's just kind of um, it. It's been interesting to observe that sometimes these urinary symptoms really do come from more of a mental emotional cause rather than a physical cause. Yeah, well, if I were to also consider the physical cause, the uh, germ, you know, whatever the germ might be, we know that our terrain is really dictating whether or not a germ causes symptoms or whether or not our immune system is going to support the clearance and balancing of our terrain. And we know that one aspect of our terrain is the input of our autonomic nervous system. Like we always say on these Wisdom Wednesday episodes, should really just be like autonomic nervous system Wednesday <laughs> or, uh, you know, a Vegas nerve Wednesday or something like that. Uh, but the fact is that, yes, that, that really is one electrical wiring component of our, our brain body connection and how our state of mind, state of, um, you know, our state of, thoughts our, our mindset influences our, our physiologic state yeah so in our in our terrain and makes us more susceptible or vulnerable to these infections and maybe we just have that energetic for whatever reason vulnerability to the urinary tract and maybe other people have oh a more tendency for uh you know i don't know the the sore throat and the laryngitis and the you know that sort of thing or maybe people have the the liver, stomach, digestive stuff going on. So we, we all have kind of our vulnerabilities anatomically, physiologically, but also those vulnerabilities might have a lot to do with maybe like the energetic kind of mm -hmm. chakra energy system yeah. uh, level as well. Yeah. Well, I kind of want to maybe start the conversation by asking you, Ben, and we'll also asking myself and disclosing, um, you know, <laughs> haven't there been times <laughs> for both you and both for me where like, you know, we just we 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 have more urinary urgency, whether it's like on a road trip and it's like, oh, my gosh, I like can't hold my bladder like I yeah. used to. Or I'm, you know, ending a walk and I can see the house in sight. Yeah. But it's like, I don't know if I can make it. And, <clears throat> you know, it's so interesting because for me. I go in and out of, you know, experiencing that. It's been a while since I've felt, well, actually I'm pregnant now. So things are just kind of different. <laughs> you, yeah, every, just every 20 I just, minutes. I have like a seven pound baby sitting on my bladder right now. So things are a little different. But, <laughs> but <clears throat> previously I look back at how 
you know, that experience really came and went in phases. And what it makes me think about is actually, um, if you haven't yet come across the work of Dr. John Sarno, he talks about TMS, which is tension myositis syndrome, where he talks about this brain body connection. And he really, he talks about quite a few different conditions and how um, kind of, you know, a suppressed emotions, suppressed rage, suppressed anger can manifest in different parts of the body. Mm-hmm back being one of the main areas, having back pain. But he also talks a lot about urinary symptoms as being a very common place for um, that kind of suppressed rage to show up, to manifest. And I think it's just interesting to kind of look back and be like, hmm, what was going on during those times when, you know, maybe like the urgency was just a little bit more regular, but unexplained um, by any other kind of, uh, yeah. you know, medical reason, right? So I, I know you kind of started asking me a question five minutes ago. Was that? that I guess, I guess, that, I guess I just, question? I know I just kind of shared my experience and oh. my thoughts, but I'm just curious, like, yeah, I can't draw any connections. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't draw any connections. But that being said, I do know for sure that my mindset plays a huge role in my experience of whether or not I need to pee. Yes. You know, oh, I'll never forget. This is a quick short story. When I was in third grade, I remember I was third grade because I remember my third grade teacher very well and I did not like her at all. And I remember her talking (laughs) to me and I, you know, raised my hand and needed to go to the bathroom because that's what we do in like elementary school. Can I go to the bathroom? And we must have been in the middle of something really important because she said, no, you, you need to wait until we're done with this. And I was like, and then all of a sudden, like that urge got worse. Yeah. And it was like, oh, shoot. Like, what do you mean? I can't go. And I it was, was that like, rage. <laughs> <laughs> I was enraged at the third grade teacher. Um, but I was like, oh, sh- like what? And then I, th- I think I might have said something like, please. Or, you know, and then I remember her saying, just think of waterfalls and she was like taunting me and i remember just getting like you know more angry and and self-conscious but also like i was gonna pee my pants um so i'm pretty sure i didn't pee my pants and everything was okay but anyways it's like the more you fixate on it the more you fixate on it the more oh my gosh i need to go to the bathroom oh my gosh i need to go to the bathroom the more it builds up and I, uh, another tangent, I do also remember learning, you know, in anatomy and physiology, how we're wired um, and how the, the bladder is wired to kind of experience these, these kind of waves of urgency. And if we don't allow our bladder to release, then there's that wave passes, kind of similar to hunger waves, but different, uh, different hormones and signals, of course. So it's like, we need to go to the bathroom and then it's like, we don't go and it's like, okay, we don't really, we, that, that kind of passed, but then we get another wave. And again, if we fixate on that wave, then, oh boy, we're, it might be in trouble. But if we allow that wave to pass, and I'm not suggesting that everyone hold their bladders, but it's maybe insightful to know that it's, you know, potentially not an emergency, um, and um, like just having that awareness of our mind body connection and how our thoughts and focus really does influence our state of physiology. To me, it's very empowering and interesting and it makes me feel more in control and at least like knowledgeable and understanding of my body and physiology rather than just like, oh no, something's wrong. What, what do I do? Where's the closest bathroom? So, yeah. 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 So yeah, what what are the connections? <laughs> what are the connections between <laughs> between uh, like the energetic emotional connections between UTI symptoms, uh, you know, kidney infections, and that whole, whole urinary system with our like emotional patterns or whatnot? Yeah. Well, it's interesting because in preparing for this episode and referring to my little books, okay. Um, the theme I know you don't like it when I say that, but the theme that comes up is literally like verbatim being pissed off well that was the liver and the gallbladder so i I don't believe it 
I know, but it says usually <laughs> at the opposite sex or lover blaming others. And then also something else that came up was allowing someone to manipulate you and control you, not knowing how to stand up for yourself. So more of like the relationship stuff. More relationship stuff. I also know that bladder is generally associated with fear energetically as well. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of things we could talk about here, but I thought it might be fun to unpack the whole relationship Um you know, kind of more romantic lover relationship kind of topic, if you're up for it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you want to unpack? <laughs> well, I know it's like, uh, I guess, especially the last two episodes, we talked quite a bit about anger. We talked quite a bit about blaming, taking responsibility. But you know what? I would like to talk about, you know, maybe I'll talk about one of the most profoundly helpful things for me, the most profound insights I've had in our relationship. Okay. And then maybe and, you can do the same. And and has that helped your urinary system to be more <laughs> I don't know if I can if I can draw any direct connections, but um, but anyway, it's at least, you know, it, it's urinary week. So hey, we'll talk about relationships, right not? Um, cool. so yeah, I think honestly for me, the biggest thing that really helped experience more love and intimacy and connection in our relationship was to relate to my thoughts of um, maybe like discontent or anger or blame or whatever. Like whenever, I mean, we, if you've been in a relationship, you know that those thoughts come up from time to time. Why isn't he doing this? Why did he respond this way? Yeah. Why blah, 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 blah. Whenever I would have a thought that would bring about an icky feeling, and I, maybe I haven't been as good about following this rule recently. It can always be better. <laughs> yes. But whenever, you know, a thought comes up that elicits an icky feeling, not to act on that feeling, not to speak from that feeling, and rather to allow time to let that feeling pass. And once that feeling passes, to see if there's still an issue that needs to be talked about from a grounded place, or whether from that grounded place, I'm realizing, wow, that was really a non-issue. Why was I so worked up about that? Yeah. And it's so interesting how I, I look at circumstances where maybe I did speak up from that icky feeling, or I did act on that icky feeling. And oftentimes what could happen is like this spiral into an argument. And generally it's over something that is so small, so minuscule, but then it leaves the couple feeling like, oh my gosh, yeah. why are we together? Why are we doing this? When, you know, <laughs> really, I mean, it, it could all have been avoided if simply I took responsibility for my icky feeling I, coming from only my thoughts I, and not uh, from your behavior. Uh, I, I got to pause you because um, that's not entirely true. Um, from my perspective, you can do whatever you want and be as crazy a bitch as you can. <laughs> and uh, my and it's not going to cause any you know uproar or irritation in me in, unless I'm in that vulnerable irritated state of mind as well right so that's all to say that it really takes two people yes. it, it takes two to tango it does it takes two to tango it takes two to dispute it takes two to conflict and argue with one another and if there's one person in a relationship at any given point in time that is in that clear level-headed state of mind that understands where that other person is and can see where that other person is and the way i i like to say it is you know rather than seeing like Susanna angry I see Susanna or rather than seeing angry Susanna I see Susanna angry state of mind you know and knowing that angry Susanna is not Susanna it's just that state of mind that she has like in that moment and that's not her um, so I don't have to take that personally I don't have to react and respond to that and yeah <laughs> I'm not always in that grounded, level-headed state of mind either. And, you know, but anyways, like as long as there's one person that's kind of somewhere near that groundedness, then they can kind of allow themselves to navigate the issue with a little bit more grace and not kind of stoke the emotional flames 
and kind of bait the the, uh, the other into a full blown conflict, which yeah, sure can happen as well. If you know, if two if two people are in a low state of mind, then things can spiral downward pretty darn quickly, as yeah. we've experienced, and I trust most people have. Um, but even when those things spiral downward quickly, it's so helpful to know. You know, this is where I feel like I. I'm the master at this point, <laughs> just kidding. But um, it's so helpful to know that like, that's not me, you know, that's not me. That's, that wasn't Susanna. That's not me. That's just this, you know, stormy state of mind that blew through this little tornado, hurricane, whatever it is, this, this weather front that blew through and ripped the doors off of the house and, you know, let things out. And I am not that I am that source of awareness and consciousness through which that storm passes. So that allows me to kind of reconnect more quickly with my truth, with my peace, with my groundedness, so that the quote unquote healing or resolution or intimacy um, can come back sooner than later. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, no, those are all really, really important pieces. And it certainly does take two to tango. And the beauty is that, you know, when the storm passes for both people, what is left is their true nature, yeah. which is peace and love, which naturally, you know, it's like mm -hmm. easy to connect with each other and yeah. easy to feel that intimacy. So of course, what is relation? What do relationships have to do with uh, our urinary tract and kidneys and bladder and you know preventing UTIs? Well, a whole heck of a lot because um, if we're in that kind of begrudging resentment state, then we're going to throw off our integrate balance of our endocrine system, our autonomic nervous system, and so on. Um, so we want to give ourselves the best fertile environment to thrive and to heal. And that of course involves being mindful of our emotional state in relationship with self and other. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone. We'll see you next week for another wisdom Wednesday. All right. Peace and love. Bye.